All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, or Chakadash, which Yahweh, that's Heavenly Father's true name, Yahweh Shai, that's whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that's his true name, and Chakadash, that is the Holy Spirit. And I also want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to all you brothers out there. And I want to do a lesson. On this photo that I uh, ended up seeing actually uh, actually a couple months ago maybe like two months ago but uh I uh, ended up not getting around to doing uh, a lesson on it until now I uh, ended up uh, seeing it and the spirit hopped on me to uh you know get into this uh, uh you know into this lesson now okay and um as you see okay this uh, photo, it deals with uh, Eve and the serpent, all right? Which Eve, okay, all right, that represents the Israelite woman. And in particular, the so-called black woman, all right? But, you know, it you know, represents all, you know, the tribes, okay? You know, the so-called black, you know, blacks, all right? So-called Hispanics and Native American women, okay? You see? And um, the serpent, that uh, represents... Esau Edom, okay, which is uh, the so-called white man. That's his true biblical nationality, all right? And just a side note, before, you know, Esau Edom, the so-called white man, you know, was that nation, okay? He was the serpent, okay, in the uh, in the book of Genesis, all right? You know, and, um, you know, that serpent that was eastward, okay, in Eden, as the scriptures say, Okay? You know, maybe I'll do a lesson on that, you know, because uh, Esau was also, you know, Cain, okay? And like I said, you know, he was also, uh, you know, the serpent, okay? But, um, you know, let's get into this lesson here, all right? And um, it says in the photo here, it says, you won't die alone. This is the serpent talking, okay? You'll be a boss chick, bad bitch. You will have your choice of high value men too. You could tell Adam to take a hike and you won't have to submit, bite it. Okay? And um basically uh you know she's got the you know that fruit, okay? And um I'll say this, that fruit, which we'll get into it in a little bit, that fruit is an actual fruit, okay? It actually represents philosophies and ideologies. Okay, and you see that's what our uh, women have uh, done. They've, um, you know, have been you know beguiled, okay, and now they follow the ways of death. All right, to basically get certain perks in this particular society that's run by Esau Edom, aka the serpent. Okay, hey, they're able to be, you know, that woman that's got you know money. Okay, they don't have to listen to uh, to their man, and hey, they can call nine one one. They the courts are in their favor. All right, so on and so forth. Basically, modern day feminism. You see, that's what they um subscribe to. And you see, they think that they're in a good case because you know at that present moment when they you know decide to leave their man, okay, when they decide to put their, you know, children's father on, you know, child support, take the children, when they are able to, you know, talk back to a man, you know, they, they, they feel good at that present moment, but look, at the end of the day, these things are destructive, okay, see, when they um, leave their man, and they, you know, start dealing with multiple men, they start, you know, sleeping around, these women, all right, they end up getting STDs. Hey, some of them uh, bump into, you know, men that are, you know, actually violent. You know, scammers, etc. You know, that the so-called quote-unquote ruin their lives. You know, all right. Hey, they, they try to you know lead a household. Now their son, you know, is very effeminate. He can't control his emotions. He actually might turn out to be, you know, one of those alphabet boys. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay? 
hey, the daughters, you know, end up being that, you know, that thought, that tramp. Next thing you know, you know, uh, that daughter has a, a kid at 15, doesn't know who the uh, father is, you know, you see? This is what happens, you know, when you follow hey, these ways. They have no protection in the household. If something, you know, did occur, let's say they had, you know, there was a robber, a thief coming, or somebody that, you know, a man that wanted to rape, okay? Now they have no protection. And let's say none of these things happen, right? Hey, at the end of the day, once these women hit round about 40, hey, they're alone. They're wondering why no one wants them. Now they're in their, you know, maybe their house or their condo, all right? You know, you know, sipping on, uh, 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 you know, Moscato, okay? Sitting down with their dog or their cat. And I'll say this, at my, uh, at my old job, I used to, you know, deal with a lot of clients, okay? And I would uh, be, you know, all over the city. And I'll say this, a lot of my clientele, I'm going to say at least 50% of them, we're in downtown, and the, uh, I'll say 50% of them were women, okay? Single uh, uh, women that were in downtown, okay, that had no uh, no man, no, I'll say this, on top of that, no children, okay? And they would literally have, you know, all the, the things of, you know, of this world, so to speak, but just be, you know, depressed, constantly drinking, constantly on, you know, antidepressants, you see? That lay that that so called lifestyle, which is really a death style, is not beneficial. Okay, but uh, let's get into these scriptures. All right, we're gonna start off with uh, Genesis the third chapter, and we're gonna uh, read a chunk of this. All right, now it says here, this is Genesis three and one. Now the serpent was more uh, subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord Yahweh had made. Okay, all right, hey, hey, he's all slick. He's very very slick. Hey, the scriptures talk about in the book of Psalms how his words were uh, smoother than butter. Okay? See? This guy, hey, he, he, could, he could talk, man. He could talk. And that's, uh, and that's how he's trapped up a lot of people. By his words. You see? But let's keep reading. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath the Most High said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the Most High said, hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye uh, die. And it says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall surely not die. Alright? You see, hey, that's what Esau says, Ye shall not surely die. You know? He pushes that on our woman to this day. It's okay, hey, you don't need a man in the household. It's okay, you know, to, um, um, you know, basically follow, you know, the alphabet uh, crew. It's okay to be a feminist. It's okay to do all these things. They, there's no consequences. That's basically what he's saying. There's no consequences. There's no consequences of, uh, you know, committing crimes. Because that, that's what he, he pushes too. That these women, they, they, they don't have to deal with um, their actions. All right. You see, but hey, in reality, in reality, uh, um, there, are, there, there's a repercussion for your actions. You know that that that's reality. But see, they these people, man, okay, don't want to deal with that. Hey, these Edomites don't want to deal with uh, a reality, and in in our women, okay. You see, but let's keep reading. Verse 5, And the Most High doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Okay? And now... Let me just get a quick scripture, all right, to prove that um that 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 fruit is not talking about literal fruit, you know, because you'll have Christians, okay, or somebody I'll say this unlearned, 
really believe that this was an apple. You know? That this was uh just just something that was, you know, like a, a you know, literal fruit growing, okay, in the Garden of Eden. Alright, but this is uh the uh the book of uh where is it at? Hold on. I think it's the book of Amos. Okay. Talks about the fruit of lies. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, look this up. I forgot where it's at exactly. Okay. Hosea. There we go. This is the book of Hosea. It says here, Ye have plowed... You know what? Let me read 13 or 12. This is Hosea 10 and 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. And this is what we need to be doing now. Okay? As Israelites. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Alright? You know, we got to get right. You know, we got to uh, repent. You know, change from our evil ways. And continue to uh, obey the law, statutes, and commandments. You know? And it says here, this is Hosea 10 and 13 now. Ye have plowed wickedness, ye have reaped iniquity. Because that's what happens. When you uh, when you sow wickedness, you're going to reap iniquity. Okay? And look, if you're, you know, if you're committing iniquities, that means you're sinning. Which sinning is the transgression of the law, meaning the breaking of the law. Okay? You see? And when you break the the law, that, that, that hey, you're, you're, um, <clears throat> you're, um, uh, um, your reward is death. Because, uh, what does it say? The wages of sin is death, as it says in the book of Romans. You see? It doesn't lead to a lifestyle. It leads to a death style. Okay? You see? Now, let me keep reading. You have eaten the fruit of lies. You see? That's the main point. You have eaten the fruit of lies. And that's what Eve did. Okay? And then Adam, you know, he 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 followed, you know, soon after. Okay? We, you know, have eaten the fruit of lies. Okay? But I'll say this. You know, mainly our women. They, they, they really subscribe, all right, to this, you know, you know so-called lifestyle right now. This era that we're living in, they love it. You know, because it, 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 like I said, it benefits them. They don't have to deal with any type of, uh, you know, repercussions. Okay? The courts are in their favors. Hey, they can, you know, create an OnlyFans account, you know, and, and get money. They, they, they can sit there and play, you know, 10 dudes at once. And live a, um, a, 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 you know, this, uh, you know, luxurious lifestyle. You see? That, that, that's what they do. You know? And, and that, but at the end of the day, they, they, these women, like I said, hey, by the time they hit 40, and that, that's, a, that's a long, I, I, I'm, ex hold on, let me say, this, that's an extension of what, really, you know, the, 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 uh, the time frame. Because really, once they hit around their 30s, they're through. But I'll say that some of them, you know, hey, they keep it together, you know. They may eat well. They may, uh, you know, um, work out. So they, you know, they, you know, look good. They're intact. All right. They may know how to play the game, so to speak, you know, better than others. So they, they last a little longer. But hey, one, hey, once 40 hits, it's a wrap. It's a wrap for women. And then all that stuff starts really hitting them hard. Then, like I said, then they're complaining, wondering why, hey, their life isn't, you know, it isn't, you know, peaches and cream anymore. You see? But let me keep reading. It says, uh, let me finish this out. It says, Ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trust in thy way in the multitude of thy mighty men. You see, our people trust in these ways, okay? They don't believe that the most high's ways are correct. And that's going to be, um, that's going to lead to their downfall, okay? That's ultimately going to lead to them, you know, Failing and being destroyed. Okay. But let's uh let's go back to that Genesis 3. Like I said, I want to get a good chunk out of, out of this Genesis 3. Okay. 
Now this is uh, Genesis um, 3 and 7 now. He said, let's go all the way down. I'm going to go down to like perhaps even uh, like 19, 1920 around there. This is uh, Genesis 3 and 7 and it reads, And the eyes of them were both open and they knew that they were naked. And they uh, sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron, aprons. Okay. Now, like I said, hey, the, you know, the modern day Christian and those that are unlearned, take this literally and they believe that Adam and Eve were naked but really they weren't what it means by being naked is that they were exposed okay they were exposed you see let's get um let's get a couple precepts to prove that all right this is um what is it Exodus I think it's 32 give me one moment let me just double check this yeah, this is uh, Exodus 32 and 25. Let's read that real quick. Okay. Exodus 32 and 25, straight to the point. And it reads here, And when Moses saw that the people were naked, it says, For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Okay. And this is going into the whole, you know, the whole story about the, uh, you know, the golden calf and all that. All right, but point being, though, is they weren't really naked. They were shamed. That's how they became naked, okay? You see? All right. They were exposed for doing wickedness, okay? Now, let me get another uh, scripture because there's one that goes really into it. It goes into the, um, the uh, basically, the iniquities, Okay? That that's really what it is. It's those iniquities, those sins that have uh, put us in this lowest state. All right. Let me get another precept. It's a lock here. Let me find it real quick. This is um. Oh no, I think it's this Chronicles Salakia. I think it's Second Chronicles twenty eight and nine. Let me get this real quick. Let me just double check. All right. Let me see if this is it. Hold on, where is it? Second Chronicles twenty-eight. Or nineteen, my bad. Here we go. <clears throat> this is uh Second Chronicles twenty-eight and nineteen. For the Lord Yahweh brought Judah low because of Ahaz king of Israel. For he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. You see, it just means that, that since, you know, we've transgressed, all right, we sinned. Hey, we, we were put to a shame. We were naked. We were bare. All right? Because I'll say this. When you sin, you shouldn't feel proud about these things. You should have your head down, you know? And especially when, when, when people see it. You know, you, you shouldn't, you know, uh, be, you know, high-minded, you know, when... uh. Basically, your your iniquities get put out to the forefront, you know? You see? So that's what it means by being naked, all right? Just so we have understanding on that. You know, uh, these uh, these scriptures are deep, man. They're not, th th this is not uh, a simple book here, you know? And if you read this, you know, for face value, you, you, you'll be lost in the scriptures, man, you know? You'll be lost, but let's keep uh, let's keep reading. This is um, this is uh, Genesis three and eight, and they heard the voice of the Lord Yahweh, all right, walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and that voice, okay, is talking about um, that that's the prophets, you know. Uh, just a little side note, that's the prophets. They're the mouth mouthpiece of the Lord. Remember that. You know, talks about how the Lord spake by the prophets. You know, there's many scriptures on that. All right. You know, I'm just going to uh, leave it as that, you know, for time's sake. But hey, if, you know, it just it t type that, that uh, that's uh, what I said by the uh, 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 by the, uh, uh, the mouths of the prophets, you know, something under those lines. You know, they'll come up. Hosea, I think it's a uh, uh, 12 and 10. 
Luke, the first chapter towards the 69th verse. Those are just two, you know, quick scriptures on that. You see? But let's keep reading. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord Yahweh amongst the trees of the garden. All right? And what it means by that is they were trying to hide themselves amongst the people, the other nations that were in, okay, um, the earth. Because there's always been, okay, the sons of the Most High. You know, the basically that righteous seed. There's always been the sons of men, which is talking about the um, the heathens, all right, the other nations. And then there's always been the seed line of the wicked, okay, which that represents Esau. It's always been like that, okay? And, it's, and those trees represent, like I said, people. Let's get a quick scripture to prove that. This is the book of Mark. I think it's 8 and 32, if I'm not mistaken. All right, this is uh, Mark 8, and I think it's 32. Oh, man, I know it's Mark the 8th chapter. Where is it at? Oh, 24. This is uh, Mark 8 and 20. I'll start at 23. I'll start at actually 22. This is uh, Mark 8 and 22, and he cometh to uh, Beth Sedai. All right, and it says, and they, and they bring a blind man unto him and brought him and besought him to touch uh, him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he spat on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw ah. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Okay. You see, that's the main point. All right. To prove that those trees are actually men. You see. That's what it represents. When it's, uh, that, that's what it means when it says that uh, Adam, okay, and Eve, they um, hid themselves amongst the trees of the garden. They tried to hide themselves amongst these other nations. Hey, but the Most High knows who we are. We can't hide. Okay? And it says here, verse 9, this is Genesis 3 and 9 now. And the Lord Yahweh called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid, meaning the prophets cursed them out, basically. All right? They gave him the judgment. They said what was going to happen. And it says here, because I was naked, okay, meaning he, he transgressed. He's been exposed. And I hid myself. So hey, Adam was ashamed. He wasn't proud of what he did. Okay? And it says here, verse 11, And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord Yahweh said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord Yahweh said unto the serpent, Okay, and this meaning unto Esau. Alright, the so-called white man. This is a this is a curse. That he's put upon uh, uh, them. All the way. Alright. During the time of. Uh, you know. Adam and Eve. Okay. And the serpent in the garden. It says here. Because thou hast done this. Thou art cursed. Above all cattle. And above every beast of the field. Meaning. They're, they're the uh, most cursed nation. Okay. And. It, it, it's true. These Edomites are the most cursed. They have recessive genes, okay? They have blue eyes, blonde hair, pale flesh. That That's a curse, okay? If you have blue eyes, you, you have, um, you, you, you basically have, uh, uh, weak eyes. All right, that, that's a known fact. I remember, actually, um, I remember, um, when I was in grammar school, there was this, uh, a Polish, uh, uh girl in my class. Now, she could have been Jake, I don't know, that's neither here nor there, but, you know, she was a Polish girl, and, um, she had these blue eyes, and I remember there was, um, she said something one day that always, you know, stuck with me, that she said that basically people with blue eyes have, have, have uh, uh, you know, they, they have really weak eyesight, and they tend to, you know, need glasses, they they need sunglasses for sure, because they, they that, uh, that sun affects their eyes, you know? They, you know, when when you have um, when you have uh, you no know, no melanin in your skin, 
you get sunburned. And look at those Edomites, you know, that are in, you know, Australia, South Africa, hey, out there in um the state of Israel right now. They have the highest levels of, of skin cancer, you know, and skin issues. You know, see, because he, 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 that melanin, all right, that protects you from the sun. And, and it allows you to get that vitamin D in, in you, you know. They always got to, you know, get, uh, you know, that, that, that sunscreen and all that stuff. You see? That's why I say it's good to, you know, to, to you know, have that melanin. But see, they, the Most High stripped that from Esau. And then ultimately, they're going to be destroyed as a nation. Okay? That's their judgment. That's the, the final, you know, judgment of the Lord for them. Complete and utter destruction. That's why they're the, uh, they're cursed above all the cattle and above every beast of the field. Okay? And it says here, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Which that represents them just basically... You know, going after their lust, okay? Whatever their desires are, they 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 go after it, whether it's good or bad, you know. And and them eating that dust that that that's you know that represents you know confusion, you know. Because hey, I'll say this, you know, when you, you know, for lack of words, they when you got dust in your face, you don't know what the hell is going on, you know. You're basically blind. And that's, you know, what Esau does. He walks blindly out here, so to speak. You know? This guy walks bl blindly. He just does stuff. He doesn't think of, you know, the consequences. He he just does it. If, it, 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 it. if he thinks about it, it sounds good in his head. He just goes with it. You know? Well, let's keep reading. This is uh, verse 15 now. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. Now, this is where it gets tricky right here, because you, you would think that that woman is just talking about Eve. But really, that represents the nation of Israel in this particular verse right here. Because you got to um, remember, as the scriptures say, that in uh, Jeremiah 6 and 2, that the Lord sees Israel as a calmly and delicate woman. Okay? You see? And I'll say this. How can... How can a um a woman produce seed? That comes from a man. Okay? So that that that's not talking about even the scripture. This is talking about the nation of Israel. This is a, a referring to things in the future. And another side note, this also proves that that serpent wasn't an actual snake. That re that that's a, that was an actual man. Okay? Which we know it, you know, it, it, um, it's Esau, Edom. Okay? That's why it says, between thy seed and her seed. Meaning there's going to be war between these two nations. And then when we read the book of Genesis, the uh, 25th chapter, it goes into that. You know? Two nations in, in thy womb. Okay? They are fighting in the womb. You see? Okay? Now let's keep reading. It says, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy heel, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And you see, that, that this is um, the punishment that the Lord gave to, to Eve. That basically your childbearing, you know, process is going to be, you know, uh, painful. It's going to be grievous. It's going to be hell, basically. And look, your man is going to rule over you. Okay, because that's how it was intended for the woman. Okay, to just be a help me. But see, in today's society, you know, they, they, our women they don't have to listen to us. They could, you know, do whatever they want to, you know, do. You know, and that's because hey, they the woman has been beguiled, man, by the serpent, and they really believe that th th this is you know a good thing, and it's not. It's clearly destructive. I think we were going into this um 
a little bit. Of, I don't know if it was on Friday, at Friday camp or um or Saturday camp. We were talking about how basically the ways of the West. Oh no no, it was Thursday class. That's what it was. I knew it was one of those days. It was Thursday class. We mentioned how the ways of the uh, the West is clearly not beneficial. You know, it's clearly not beneficial because we were going into how basically. You know, you, you you look at the uh, the ways of the East. You know, you 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 know, you 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 see how how that you know. Because I'll say this: the ways of the East is somewhat structured still. All right, they they believe in what modern day medicine, or um, they don't believe in modern day med- medicine. They believe in you know being holistic. You know, you know dealing with the herbs. Okay, they uh they deal with you know the man being the head of the household, getting everything you know. Uh, organized and structured properly. All right, they 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 uh they they don't believe in the alphabet lifestyle, and those societies are flourishing right now. While look look at the West right now, it's plummeting, okay, it's plummeting, and it's showing you that these ways are destructive. Simple as that. Uh, uh, uh you uh, uh, the people out here, okay. You know, commit you know high levels of suicide. Okay, they, these people are on all these antidepressants, overweight. They have all these health issues. You know, high blood pressure, gout. You know, uh, heart issues. You know, so on and so forth. This is not a positive uh, 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 type of uh, of lifestyle. But see, our women, they, 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 like I said, they subscribe to it and they really believe that this is the way to go. And the reason why they're, they're doing it is because two, two reasons. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, he's in power. So since they see him in power, they believe that his ways are on point. Because see, they're not spiritual. They don't believe that the Most High set him up. They believe that he just got there because, you know, hey, he's got the, uh, the might. He's got the wealth. He's got the, you know, the wisdom, you know. So uh, they really think that he, he's doing something right. That's, you know, uh, the first reason. And the second reason why they do it is because this lifestyle, or really death style, okay, it's pleasing to the flesh. Simple as that. Feels good for that, you know, that moment. All right, so that's why they do these things. But let's go back to this. The point being, though, is a man's supposed to rule over that woman. Tell them what to do. And see, these women, I'll say this, a little side note. They believe that they, uh, uh, even if they don't have like a so-called man in their life, right? These women don't, uh, they, they, I'll say this, they fail to realize that they're getting controlled by a man. Whether it be, you know, uh, you know of their nation or by the, the government, okay? You know, they, they follow the, the, the agenda, whether they believe it or not, you know? They, 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 they believe in, in these ways. And a man's the one who's, uh, you know, behind the scenes, you know, controlling everything. So they're, they're they're following a man whether they know it or not. But let's get into this. This is uh, Genesis 3 and 17 now. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face, thou uh, shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And this is going into how we're gonna have to uh, work, you know, you know, for our daily bread, you know, for the things that we have, and that hey, eventually we're gonna die. You know, we're not going to be immortal anymore. Because I'll say this, another little side note. At that time, you know, you know, a, a, you know, Adam, okay, he was immortal, man. And that's because he wasn't sinning. Remember, I made a statement earlier. How it says in the book of Romans that the wages of sin, you know, is death. Hey, before he ate of that, that they, the fruit of lies, Adam wasn't sinning. He was, you know, he was perfect. Okay, but then he ate of that fruit, and that's a what were brought sin into this world. You know, really started off with you know Eve. Okay, but after you know after that, Adam you know ate that fruit. You know, 
soon after. You see? All right. But uh, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, I think I'm about end off this lesson. You know, I just wanted to touch on a couple things. But you know, that Genesis, the third chapter, is very heavy. And you know, all these things are playing out right now. <clears throat> you know, you have our women and you know the so-called white men, all right, the Edomites, the Israelite woman, and the Edomites say that they're um, in league with each other. And these things, you know, started all the way in Genesis, the third chapter. And now things are playing out, okay? And as you see, hey, these things, you know, are destructive to our, our, our people. Hey, our, since our women are against us, it, it's really destroyed our nation. You know, look at the, you know, the, the, the modern day Israelite, you know, household structure. It's terrible. It's the worst. Hey, the so-called, uh, you know, uh, you know, a black and Hispanic household and Native American household is, is just through. Our people are on drugs, gang banging, effeminate, you know, effeminate for, uh, uh, I'll say this, effeminate, you, we have effeminate men over um, masculine women, okay? Our people are full of diseases. Our people are lost, man, they're just through. So clearly this isn't the way. See, they, what, we, what we have is true life, you know, which is the ways of Yahweh Hashem El Shai, man. This is true life right here. And this is why this is such a great blessing to know these things. Because if we didn't, we would just be out here just walking around aimlessly. Just, just, uh, just gone. You know? You see? So this is why we always got to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Hashem El Shai. Call Haloyim La Yahweh Hashem El Shai. That's how you say it in the Hebrew. Okay? Gotta constantly praise you, Ba Shemel Shai, and thank you, Ba Shemel Shai, for this. You know? But I'm gonna end off this lesson. Hopefully, it was an edifying one, and with that, I'm gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to you, Ba Shemel Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to all you brothers. Shalom.